What was it that was so attractive about Initialized in particular? Well, Initialized really sets the standard for Seed, and this is an exciting time to be at Seed. I mean, you have so much evolving in the world with AI just accelerating the pace of innovation, and to work hand in hand collaboratively the way that Initialized does with founders is just tr so true to my operational and entrepreneurial nature. Let's talk about some of the background you've already had in terms of helping mentor, but also putting money into startups. How much of that is occurring here in New York? How much of it is occurring across the US? Where do you think your sweet spot will lie when it comes to, I'm sure, e-commerce, but more broadly, your bucks to put to work? Yeah, it's a really exciting time in New York, and I'm thrilled that Initialize has an office and part of its team here. That was a really big plus for me. But when I think back to when we co-founded Rent the Runway, 14 years ago, there were very few startups in New York. And today, if I think of my roster of angel investments and I look at initialized portfolios, like there is a great group here so organically that's driving innovation in New York. And I am really glad to complement that mm. with the YC San Fran ecosystem that Initialize has. So I think our two networks pulled together, as well as the diverse backgrounds of the existing investing team and my background will just let us work with so many great founders and companies. Jenny, good morning from San Francisco. I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with this idea that not all VCs are the same. You get different types. Some have been founders, some have not. Some have come from sort of legacy financial institutions. Some have been engineers at you know, software companies. You were a founder, and I, I wonder how that helps you make investment decisions. Yeah, um, well, it's a really important part of how I make investment decisions. My lens as an entrepreneur really let me see how to work with investors in a way that felt helpful and organic. And I was lucky to have a team of former entrepreneurs and operators myself. And it gave me a sense of how I could relate to the aspects of entrepreneurship and a founder that I think are game changing for picking winning investments. And very unique to Initialized is the whole investment team is former founders, operators, builders from lots of different industries. And, and that is so special and unique. And it's really what made me feel at home when I got to know the team. I have met hundreds of VCs over the course of, of my career. And their approach at Initialize is, is very unique. And when you look at, at venture, not much has actually changed in how venture is done. Uh, and yet the world around us has changed so much. And, and for Initialize, it's like there isn't a playbook. It's like they're creating their own playbook of what works based on their experience as entrepreneurs, founders, and operators. And that's exciting to me. That's fast paced and entrepreneurial and feels comfortable to me. <laughs> right. Well, like even with a the playbook, there's a lot of choice though, right? So you're doing seed, but you're doing seed across such a broad range of categories. Is there one particular area that you're really excited about thematically that you're, you, you think you'll write a lot of checks to? Yeah, uh, I'm excited about a lot of areas, which is why I love that Initialized is a generalist fund and I'll have a lot of room to play. But to call out a couple of things that are really exciting right now, AI accessibility. So obviously AI has already transformed our world and is, is still evolving so quickly each day. But we're getting to a place where it's starting to become more accessible to consumers and also to larger companies as we think of B2B plugins and solutions that combine AI and agents and hit that sweet spot of efficacy, efficiency, and also trust. Uh, I'm also really excited about ways that personalization are evolving, one-to-one uh, -one personalization with the help of AI. And I continue to be such a fan of just asset utilization. So, you know, Rent the Runway being one example, but so many businesses that are finding more creative ways to use their assets and service customers in a smarter way um, is, I think, changing consumer behavior. It's what it's all about at the core of what gets me excited. What's so interesting, well, the story of Ren the Runway, I think for me, was the day that the bell was rung and just all the leadership being women. Yeah. What stood out in the initialized announcement was just how much diversity there is at a VC like that, what was 80% of partners basically being women. I mean, I'm interested as to whether that has to be something that's 
organic because they're choosing the best talent or whether it's really driven and motivating force and something that you'll look to when you're allocating towards maybe diverse founders? Yeah, um, I'm so proud and thrilled that I am with a company that has 80% of our, our investment team female. It wasn't a requirement of mine, uh, nor do I believe it was a requirement for Initialize. I, you know, I, they optimize for the best talent for, for founders and for the right fit to complement their team. But naturally, that is what organically came about. And for me, at the course of my career, likewise, it's, it's really been that way for at Rent the Runway, at Jet Black and Walmart. The teams I worked with were always largely women. And I think the perspective um, that you can bring and the vantage point when you connect to different groups of consumers is so powerful. And at Initialize, there's diversity in so many ways, like age, male, female, different ethnicities, and all of that, I think, makes us best equipped to think of industry disruption and ways to connect with different types of founders. When we think of disruption, we think of actually sort of the pressure that Rent the Runway is still under when it look at a market capitalization perspective. When you think of just e-commerce more broadly, I've talked to many VCs who are just saying, I'm not touching consumer stuff with a barge pole at the moment. Mm -hmm. Is that something you agree with or actually do you need to still see the opportunity in a consumer that still is pretty resilient in the US right now? I think it's an exciting moment to be contrarian in that category. So I'm still really excited about innovation in the consumer landscape. You know, valuations for a while were very exaggerated, and I think that's come back to a place that's much more healthy. And then there's been a lot of macro factors that have made it easier for various companies to launch consumer businesses and brands. So it's meant that there was a lot more clutter, and breaking through the noise was harder, and the cost of customer acquisition went up. But now I think you are able to start to see some companies that are, can break through that. And so, of course, consumers still want exciting new brands to engage with. I'd say in particular what gets me excited is brands that spark uh, experiential components of, of that pull on our heartstrings and touch different experiences we have in our life because the internet has made things so commoditized. We can buy things cheap, we can get it quickly, we can find almost anything. And so injecting that essence of personalization and that essence of experiential thoughtfulness, like that to me is where it's at as I think of this next generation of consumer brands. Jenny. One mistake that you made or lesson you learned through the Rent the Runway experience, and you're still on the board, but what's a piece of advice that you give based on that? Gosh, well, I feel lucky to have made lots of mistakes over the course of my career because that's how we learn, right, especially as, as entrepreneurs. You know, something that always sticks in my mind is when we were first starting the business, we didn't have a fashion background or a technology background. And I'd say with regards to fashion, we quickly scaled that learning curve. We had a lot of conversations and got to meet people in all parts of the industry. But related to technology, we were much more intimidated by the fact that we weren't engineers ourselves and we thought we could outsource that part of the business. And the reality is that anything mission critical of the, of the company, it, you really can't outsource, right? And you need to find ways to at least probe and ask the questions or have eyes on whatever's happening, you know, day to day. Uh, and so we learned that lesson, luckily, like pretty quickly. And I don't think it, you know, it took us, it took us too far off course. Um, but it's also part of what made me really excited to be at Initialize because there's former engineers that are investors at this company. And so their ability to connect with founders and different companies yeah. that are so far afield from what my natural skill set and comfort zone is really lets me build this nice complementary skill set yes. and, and base of companies to connect with.